Hi, welcome back to Pear Tech Talk. Today we are going to take a look on how to create a web server. And I will be making that on the demo platform uh, STM32H735. So I hope that you think this is interesting and uh, tag along. So here I have the STM32 Cube IDE and I have updated it to the currently latest version and that is 1.15.0. Just so that you are updated to the latest uh, firmware that are available, we can go under help and take a look under manage software packages. So here we see the embedded software package manager. And uh, we have here all the devices that we have support for. And uh, I said that we are going to use the STM32H7. So we expand that folder. And we can see that the, the latest release for the H7 series is the 1.11.2. And that is the one that I'm currently having installed. But I have the latest one here, so I will just close this one and go back to the STM32 cube. So we create a new project and we go with File, New and STM32 Project. So now the target selector has started and uh, I will go under Example Selector. Now that you're in Example Selector, you can have a filter on uh, seeing which one of these 8102 examples uh, that uh, are provided with your installation. Uh, so there are various uh, ways to look into that and I will do like uh, one way. Uh, you can do, there are several ways to do it. Uh, you can choose from the MCU and I can choose from the Serious, and I would like to just try the the series of microcontrollers and then the middleware I know that the middleware that I'm interested in this case is the uh, Netex Duo so I click on that one So now I have narrowed it down these 8100 to 16 items which is a bit more handy to to look into and there I see what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the NX uh, web server. And uh, I will just select this one and there is uh, some information about this one. And there is some text, what it's uh, showcasing and stuff. So we just hit next. So now we can see that we have got a folder called, called NX web server and uh, all the files that are involved with this, all the middlewares, all the drivers, all the documentations, application files and everything is done for. So this is a, a ready-made demo, uh, so you don't need to do anything. But you are free to, of course, go into the uh, CubeMX and uh, make changes to the project and add stuff to it as, as you wish. But this is a great start to just have a kickstart and start uh, up something that is uh, somewhat more complicated than just making a small blinky. Look into the readme file, uh, what it says, uh, what it's going to do and uh, how you're going to work with the demo. And I have been reading through this and uh, I've been testing it so I will just sh skip through this. So what we need to do is just to build a project. And the first time we will build a project it will take some time to compile. So now my compile is done. It took 42 seconds, uh, depending on your network speed and your PC speed. Uh, it can, of course, vary. Uh, then we need to uh, do one step more. There is a prerequisite on this one. The, the web files or the web pages are not stored inside the flash itself. It's stored in, the, in an SD card. So we need to have an SD card uh, installed to it, and it's a micro SD card, it's uh, yeah, these small ones. And uh, it's going to look for these two files that are already uh, installed also for you, but you need to download these files to the 
uh, SD card. So what I do to find it easily, I just copy those files and I search for the files in within my uh, Windows directory. So now I searched for the the, the dashboard.html and it found it in, in this directory. And if we just back, we can see that here we have the project for us and we have the web content. So if we open this folder, it says web content. There is one folder and there are two HTML files. And if we open that one, we see that there are some CCS files and uh, that is cascading stale sheets uh, source files and there are some JavaScript. And uh, this goes beyond uh, what this video is about. So uh, if you would like to know more about uh, JavaScript, etc., look for some other videos than this because I won't go into this. Uh, but we take these files and just copying down to this uh, SD card uh, and put that afterwards into the main board. And you need to do that before you boot up the board, otherwise it won't, will fail the demo because it's not the hot swap enabled board. So when you've done that, uh, we just need to uh, get the software down to the, the board itself. So this is the board that I will be using and uh, this is the STM32H735G and I'm just running some uh, touch GFX code for the moment and up here you can see that I have an uh, Ethernet cable connected to it and the other one is connected here on ST-Link USB there are two USB but you should use that one that's called ST-Link and up here we have the uh, memory card and uh, here we have the memory card where, where I just copied these files so we just plug that in so that contains uh, all the web files uh, the web content and before we launch the code we also need to uh, take in some uh, terminal program and I have Terraterm here and uh, you need to configure that one to the correct COM port and the UART is 115,200 boards. Uh, so I just put that on the side for the moment and uh, we hit the debug. And we get up the edit launch uh, configuration properties and the reason for we get this the first time is that we haven't launched yet mm. so we need to come make some configurations for it. And the configuration is very easily, uh, I'm just looking for to see if we can find the, uh, the ST-Link and uh, that is the easiest way just to scan for it so to see that we have connections with the board. And just hit OK. So then it will try to connect the board and uh, download the software to the board. Uh, but now it says download verified successfully. So what we can do is that we can bring in uh, the, if I just try to have both of these at the same time. On the screen. Come on. Like so. And so. So now we can hit run. Uh, and then it says NX web server application started and it gets an IP address 196, 192.160.0.63 and it says media, FX media successfully opened and if you don't get successfully opened that the, means that there is something problems with your SD card. So uh, just format the SD card and uh, download the software files again to it. And then it says uh, the web server successfully started. So now I started uh, Google Chrome and we enter the... I think it was 63. And it says then dashboard.html because if you remember there were two HTML files that we could use. And if we start with the dashboard HTML and uh, so now we actually are talking to the board 
to the board uh, directly here and uh, try to see if I can So what we can see here now is the IP address and the connection port and the TCP traffic that is uh, going back and forth. And there is also an LED here, toggle the green LED on the board. And if we take a look on the board, uh, down somewhere down here, there is an LED. And if I press the toggle LED, the LED is start, start blinking. And it also says here in the terminal that the green toggle LED is on. And we see that there are some data changing here. And we can just turn it off again. So this is the ending of this demo. Uh, we didn't write any code at all. This project is already uh, handed over to us as a starting point to use the JavaScript and how to set up an Ethernet connection with uh, with the ThreadX and the NetX Duo. So hope that you found this useful and if you did and you liked the video please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber yet please hit the, the round subscribe button below. And if you have some comments for me please use the comment fields as well. Hope to see you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye.